Hello, this is Miss Moore, and today during chemistry we're going to talk about writing formulas for ionic compounds containing polyatomic ions and transition metals. Today's essential question, how are formulas written for ionic compounds containing polyatomic ions? All right, to talk about polyatomic ions, we first need to refresh ourselves on simple ions. A simple ion is an ion formed from a single atom that has lost or gained an electron. Okay, it's what we've been talking about thus far, all right, where, for example, sodium loses one electron to be isoelectronic with neon, or chlorine gains an electron, okay? Um, a polyatomic ion, on the other hand, is an electrically charged, meaning it has a positive or negative charge, an electrically charged group of two or more chemically bonded atoms that function as a single ion. Okay, so polyatomic ions don't look exactly like a simple ion because it's two or more atoms put together. But as a group, they have a positive like a one plus, a one minus, two plus, two minus, and they act just like the simple ion that we've been talking about all along. Okay. Atoms in a polyatomic ion are what we call covalently bonded. Okay, we'll talk more about what a covalent bond is next week, but for now, know that atoms in a polyatomic ion are covalently bonded. But once they're covalently bonded, it becomes a polyatomic ion, and that ion forms ionic bonds with other ions in the same way that simple ions do. Okay, so for, as far as writing formulas, it looks a little different, but you do it exactly the same way. Okay, some examples of polyatomic ions are what we call the hydroxide ion, right here. That's an, an oxygen and a hydrogen hooked together. And once they're hooked together, they end up with a one minus charge. We also have the ammonium ion, which is one nitrogen, four hydrogens hooked together. And for them to be hooked together, we need to end up with a one plus charge. So I've shown you two examples of polyatomic ion, each containing only two different types of atoms. Truthfully, many of the polyatomic ions consist of several different elements. All right, at this, at this time, if you could grab your periodic table, flip it to the back, you'll see um, your polyatomic ion handout. And I have a portion of it displayed here so we can talk about it. Okay, so you'll notice at the top it says polyatomic ions handout. And at the, then below that we have a section that says Common polyatomic cations. Remember, cations are the positive ones. And I've given you two. Okay, we've got ammonium, which is NH4 1 plus, and hydronium, which is H3O 1 plus. Okay, and then below that, which is the one we'll end up using a lot more, we've got common polyatomic anions, the negative ones. And they're divided into three groups. Okay, all of these here have a negative one charge, okay? All of these have a negative two charge. And all of these have a negative three charge, okay? So um, hopefully you're gonna get used to using, just like you're getting used to the, poly the, the periodic table, you should be getting used to using the polyatomic ion handout and we'll, of course, practice it. Okay, let's try to name a compound made up of polyatomic ions. All right, so first step in naming a compound, an ionic compound made up of polyatomic ions is to name the cation, just like we did for the simple ions. Okay, if the cation is a polyatomic ion, you need to use the handout, okay, for its name. If the cation is a simple ion, like the stuff we've been doing, you're going to use the rules we already talked about, which is if the metal comes from group 1A, 2A, or 3A, you get the name directly off the periodic table. If the metal comes from not 1A, 2A, or 3A, you're going to use the name off the periodic table, but you also need to use a Roman numeral to denote the charge. All right, so start by naming the cation. Then, just like you did for the simple ions, name the anion. Again, use the polyatomic handout if, if the ion is a polyatomic. If the ion is not a polyatomic, 
you're going to do what we've been doing. You use the name from the periodic table, drop the ending in IDE, and add IDE. Now here's something really important in yellow here. Do not, not, not change the anion name ending to ID for polyatomics. Okay. Do not change the ending to ID if the anion is polyatomic. You only change the ending to ID off the periodic table. All right, let's try a practice problem. We'll start with CaCO3. Okay, so a lot more letters than we're used to, but don't panic. Something you need to keep in mind, important here. Ionic compounds, any type of ionic compound. Okay, ionic compounds are made up of only two things, okay? That's it, just two things, a cation and an anion. That's it. So no matter how many letters are there, if it's an ionic compound, it's a cation and an anion. So start by looking at the first thing written, Ca. Is that a cation? Is it a metal? Yes, so it's a cation which means everything else is an anion. So it's not nearly so hard. So we start by naming the cation, which is calcium. Then we need to find the anion. Well, capital C, capital O, and a three, that is definitely, definitely not off the periodic table. So let's refer back to the polyatomic ion handout and see if we can find a CO3. And I see one right there. So CO3 is carbonate, which means the name of this guy is calcium carbonate. Not too bad. Let's try one more. How about NH4, NO3? Okay, that looks horrible, right? It looks horrible. Lots and lots of letters there. However, it's made up of only two things. One cation, one anion, that's it. So let's start by looking at the first letter, N. Is that a metal? No, it's a non-metal, so there is no way that N is a cation, which means NH4 must be a polyatomic. Let's see if we can find it. And I see it right at the top here, ammonia. So NH4 is ammonium. And remember, this is only made up of two things. So if NH4 is the cation, that means the NO3 must be the anion. So let's see if we can find that. And, oh darn, it's not on my list. You guys try to find it on yours and let me know what it is. All right, so what'd you guys come up with? nitrate. So NH4, NO3, as bad as it looks, is just ammonium nitrate. Not too bad. All right, let's now write formulas for a compound containing a polyatomic ion. Okay, remember, it, when an, with an ionic compound, it must be neutral. No charge. Don't matter if we're talking about polyatomics, simple ions, involved, it doesn't matter. Ionic compounds must be neutral. Okay, so first step, just like with simple ions, determine the charge of the cation and anion. If the cation or anion is formed from a single element, use the periodic table to determine the charge, right? Try to make it have the electron configuration of a noble gas by adding or losing electrons. If the cation or anion is, off the poly is a polyatomic ion, use the polyatomic ion table. All right, so if we had, let's see, what should we do here? How about magnesium 
chloride. Okay, magnesium chloride. So, start with the metal, magnesium. Is magnesium off the periodic table? Yeah. So for magnesium, we do the electron configuration, 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2. And because he's a metal, he's going to be losing electrons to become like a noble gas. So he's going to end up being Mg2+. Does that work? All right, what about chlorite? Chlorite. If it was off the periodic table, wouldn't his name be chloride? I-D-E? Yeah, it's chlorite. We know he's not off the periodic table. So we're going to have to find him on the polyatomic ion chart. And I see him on mine way at the bottom. Yours will be in the middle somewhere. Chlorite is ClO2. And it has a charge of 1 minus. All right, so for chlorite, we'll have ClO2. And the whole thing together has a charge of 1 minus. Okay. So we have Mg2 plus ClO2, 1 minus. All right, now we've got to try to make them neutral. So we have two plus charges and one minus charge. So if we add another minus charge, ClO2 again, they're now neutral. We'll cross these out. All right, so when we go to write this out, we're going to write Mg. We only have one of them. ClO2. Well, now here's the problem. We have two ClO2s. So if I write ClO2, 2, hmm, that looks like Cl that we want one Cl and 22 O's. That's not what we want. We want two ClO2s. So how do you show that? Well, you put parentheses. Mg ClO2, 2. All right. Um, now, I got a little overexcited and did the whole problem without having you write down the notes, so here you go. You can write down the steps you're supposed to do. Write, this, write down the cation, the anion, with charges side by side, exactly like you do with single ions. They're simple ions. It just looks different. Acts the same. Then add more cations or anions as needed until the compound is neutral. You have the same number of positive and negative charges. And then, if the polyatomic ion needs a subscript, you will need to use parentheses because the subscript applies to all the atoms in the polyatomic ion. Hugely important there. All right, let's try a couple more. If you feel comfortable, hit pause, try to work it out, and then hit play. So potassium sulfite. Potassium. Potassium is most definitely off the periodic table. Potassium, we're going to start by writing its electron configuration. 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2, 3p6, 4s1. Okay. And because potassium is a metal, we know he's going to lose electrons to become um, isoelectronic with a noble gas. So he is going to end up being K. We lost an electron, so 1. We have now more protons, so K1+. plus. Sulfite, ite, not ide, but ite, must be off the polyatomic ion chart. So if you could try to find sulfite, and I came up with SO3, 2 minus. All right, let's try to do this. K1 plus SO3, 2 minus. We have one plus charge and two minus charges. So to make these neutral, we're going to need to add another potassium. So charges cancel out. We end up with K2 because we have two of them, SO3. Now you can leave the parentheses on or off because we didn't need 
a subscript for the SO3. So the right answer could be take K2SO3 or, if you like, K2SO3. All right, one more. Calcium phosphate. Calcium off the periodic table. So calcium is 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2, 3p6, 4s2. Calcium is a metal, loses electrons to become like a noble gas, so he is going to be Ca2 plus phosphate. Last, last part of it is 8, so it's not off the periodic table. It's got to be on the polyatomic ion chart, calcium phosphate. So if you could look it up, and phosphate is PO4, 3 minus. Okay, next step, put them side by side. And now we got to make these neutral. So we've got a 2 plus and a 3 minus. No way to turn a 2 into a 3 or a 3 into a 2. So I'm just going to start adding. Um, and since I have less positives, I'll add another. So now I have 4 plus and 3 minus. So now I'll add another anion. So now I have 4 plus and 6 minus. Add another cation. I now have 6 plus and 6 minus. He's neutral, we can get rid of those charges. So the final answer is going to be Ca, and we have three of them, PO4. And because we have more than one PO4, we got to put the parentheses around there, showing that we want two PO4s. Okay, the PO4 is all stuck together. It's one thing. Okay? Not so bad. Looks different. Not too much, diff not too much different to actually do, though.